So Vercel has released the release candidate for Next.js version 15 and I'm extremely excited by this. So there will be a link to this article in the description below so you can check out all of the changes for yourself. But what I'm mainly interested in is the changes to caching. And actually at the exact day that this release candidate came out, I was actually having a talk with a colleague of mine and a student that I teach at the college where I work. And I was saying that I absolutely love Next.js, but I would love that they, or I would hope that they change how caching works. Because by default, caching is a bit of a mess. And this is a big step in the right direction. Fetch requests, get route handlers, and client navigations are no longer cached by default. This is a massive change. It's actually a small change, but it has massive implications to how people work with Next. Because I have seen so many people, and I've been one of these people who just didn't understand how Next.js does caching. Because caching in Next.js is complex. I mean, this here is the documentation page for the app routers caching. Um, and this is actually a documentation page that was created after feedback from the community who said caching is hard, caching is vague, please give us a good documentation page. And what the developers came up with is this page. Now, any newcomer to Next.js is not going to understand how caching works and they're probably going to be shunted away uh, from using Next.js purely because this caching thing is just weird and hard and it quite often doesn't make sense. So here they have an overview of how caching works. They explain there are four different caches and then here is a nice diagram that explains how caching works. I mean, I barely, I understand how this diagram works, but it, it takes me a lot of brain power to figure this out. This is difficult guys. Caching is weird in Next.js. It's really powerful and it's probably one of the best implementations of caching and the most powerful and even configurable ways of caching in any framework that I've seen. But it's just weird and it does caching in moments where you don't expect it. Sometimes it does it and then the next time you reload it doesn't cache. It's really weird. So disabling caching for the most aspects of caching by default is amazing. So what we're going to do in this video is we will check out three different projects or three, two different projects. I have them running in side by side. In the left window, we're running Next.js 14, the current version. And in the right window, we're running Next.js 15, the release candidate was just released. And here I have two instances of VS Code open where we can have the same code. So I'm going to run the same code for Next.js 14 on the left and Next.js 15 on the right. I have my two terminals open running those servers in dev mode so we can see exactly what's happening. Right, so what I've done here is in the app directory, I've created a folder called server component and then there's a page in there. And this is the same on both of these sides. And all that this server component is going to do is return a main element with an H1. Now, of course, if we check this out in the browser, it does what you would expect, it serves that component. An interesting difference or an interesting difference that we'll see when we're going to do some fetching in these components is when you're going to build the app. So let's npm run build with both of these uh, projects. And as you can see in the build log, the path slash server component is labeled as being static and it's in both versions. And that's exactly how we would expect it because we're not having any dynamic data in these components. We're not fetching data, we're not grabbing data out of the database and putting it into the HTML. But watch what happens if we will actually do some dynamic stuff. So I'm going to make the function asynchronous and then we're going to grab a response by awaiting fetch. And the URL I'm going to fetch is worldtimeapi.org slash API time zone Europe Amsterdam. This will give us a JSON object with information about the time at this location. Um, so the time of course constantly changes. So this is basically a dynamic resource that continuously changes or that changes quite often. Um, and then of course we want to get the data. So we will parse the response JSON object. And then I'm going to just create a paragraph here where we're going to print out data.unix time. This is one of the fields that we get in the JSON. It's basically a time string with the current time in Unix format. And it will constantly change with each second, I would, uh, I would believe. So let's add exactly that same fetch in our Next.js 15 component. We'll make this an asynchronous function and then we'll show that Unix time. So we've just saved this component. Let's go into the actual 
uh, browser, reload the pages, and let's see what we're going to get. Oh, and of course, because I was building, we need to run the dev server once more. Let's do that. All right, so let's uh, let's see what we're going to get here. So on the left, we have next 14. On the right, we have next 15. Wait for the dev server to build these components. And you can see that we get this Unix time string. Now watch what happens when we're going to refresh this page. So here we have next 14 on the left. I refresh the page. We have the same time string. Version on the left, reload. Version 14 doesn't actually update my time string. Why not? Because you would think that when I load that page, it's going to go into the router. It sees, oh, we need to render the URL server component. Here's the component for it. Let's run the function which should fetch it and then show it in the HTML. And that's not what it's doing. Well, let's check out version 15. I'm going to reload and look at that. We get the newly updated time string showing us the seconds in the Unix time format. This is how we would expect it to behave because we literally are executing the function, then we're fetching the world time API, we get the data and we're showing the Unix time. This is how I would expect it to behave, not like this. And on the left, we have next 14, and this is just running really strange. So I'm not a big fan of next 14, where it caches everything by default. Now let's go ahead and take a look in this actual diagram and see what actually it's doing here. Just going to open this in a new tab. So we have the full image here. What actually is happening in version 14? So at build time, the app is building our page. So this will be slash server component. So when we're building, when the dev server first encounters a request for slash uh, server component, or when we run the build command, we are going to render the component on the server. Now in that component, we will fetch some data. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the request memoization cache. It's really interesting and it doesn't change between version 14 and 15. This is actually a feature of React, so it's not part of Next.js. So we can kind of ignore this. If you want to know what this does, because it's really useful and really interesting, you can read about it in the caching documentation page on Next.js. I recommend that you do this because it's good to know about how request mem memoization works. But you don't really have to think about it. It's not one of those caching things that Next enforces upon you that is sometimes desired and sometimes not. You basically always want request memoization. So we'll just skip that. But then the server is going to look in a data cache. This is persistent, meaning that the data, the JSON data, that is the response from any fetch request will be saved as a file. Now, the very first time that we built this app, we don't have that data yet in the data cache because we never made that request. So it's going to fetch it from the data source, the actual URL to the world time API. We're going to get that data. The JSON data will be set in the JSON. We'll skip the request memorization. And then we get our render payload. This will be basically used in the HTML that is returned from our component. So we get the server side HTML. Both the payload with the JSON data and the HTML will now be cached in the persistent full root cache, which caches the server component's payload, which is all of the data that component needs, you know, to show it in the, in the client. And of course, the pre-rendered HTML. This is basically where your static pages are going to live. And then when the page is requested for the first time, we're going to fetch that from our server. We're going to look if the full root cache has the root slash server component, and it will have it because we had already built it at build time. And then it will serve that. On top of that, that payload, the data of the component, is now also remembered in a router cache in the client. So the HTML is cached on the server and the payload. Very quickly, we just need to sing a very simple request with, which returns some JSON and some HTML to get that page. It's not going to fetch it when we request it because it's already cached. And then it's going to also save the payload, the data in memory. So later when we're going to check the, the differences between version 14 and 15 with client side navigation, this router cache becomes important. But right now we haven't done any client navigation, so we can kind of ignore this for now as well. Um, so basically what's happening right now is at build time, when we built or requested that page for the first time, the server is going to basically fetch and render all of the data. The data from the fetch is cached. So the next time we would fetch that same resource, we're not going to get it from the API, but we're going to get it out of the cache. So that data won't change, but we won't even fetch because the whole payload and the HTML is already 
pre-rendered. It's static. So when our client, the browser, actually requests a page, like reloading, we request this page, we are getting the pre-rendered component. We're not even fetching to that API. In Next.js 15, let's go back to the article about how the things are different, fetch requests are no longer cached by default. This is great. Now in Next.js 14, if you didn't want this, to, this data to be fetched or cached, I should say, you could add an object in your fetch function and you would say cache equals no cache. So when you would do that, now your data cache and the full route cache are basically skipped and you would always get a new fetch. So your whole server component is pre-rendered -re and you basically create what we call a dynamic component. Now, this is kind of an annoying way to set this up in my opinion because it already requires three lines of code and you might have other fetches that also need to be not cached. So what you could also do, at least you're supposed to do, you would export default const, sorry, not export default, export const dynamic. So you just export a variable dynamic and Next.js will read that value when it is rendering the page. And we would say force dynamic. Now this has always been a really strange thing because it doesn't work for me. So watch this, I have set it up to force dynamic. I'm going to reload and it doesn't work. I think it will work in a uh, production build. So when you run the build command, but not in the development server, I might be wrong on that, but this has never worked for me in development. What you can also do is export revalidate. And this is basically a timer that you put on all of the data cache uh, values that are cached from this page um, and a timer in until it needs to be revalidated. And if you just set it to zero, it basically invalidates the data cache always and you always revalidate basically refetch the data so this is how you make your whole page a dynamic component now let's check out the difference here when we are going to build this so npm run build and npm run build now i didn't have to do this on my server of next.js 15 because as we have seen on next.js 15 the fetch data is no longer cached in the data cache and the server components as long as you're using fetch, are no longer cached in the full route cache. We're still caching by default if you don't have anything dynamic happening like a fetch. So when we only returned the HTML, that HTML would still be cached in the full route cache. But now that we have this fetch, the component became a dynamic component. So let's check out the build log here, hopefully in a few seconds. And it will tell us which of our paths are, uh, there we go, are dynamic or not. So you can actually see that our Oh, this is actually a, probably a bug because it still says that my server component is static, pre-rendered. That's not the case. So I, I guess they haven't updated the build log yet. Remember, this is a release candidate. So this should show F dynamic like it does now over here. So the moment that you fetch something, your component becomes dynamic. At least that is how I believe that it should work. So this be, should be a dynamic component automatically. But now with us having explicitly stated that this whole component needs to be revalidated every time, the component becomes a dynamic component. So you had to opt out of caching in Next.js 14. If I wanted my component in Next 15 to be cached, I could do that in exactly the same way, but now we're opting in. So I can add an object to fetch and I would say cache equals force cache. This will now cache this data. Or if I wanted not to put it on the individual fetch, I could export const dynamic equals force uh, static. And this is going to make the whole page a static page. So automatically now Next.js will make your component dynamic if it sees that there is a fetch happening in that component. And if you don't want that, you can now opt in to caching with export default force static. The next change to caching is with get route handlers. So when you made a route handler, so you built a route.ts file, um, if you had a get endpoint, the data returned out of that get endpoint would be cached in the data cache. This means that if you are fetching or generating or uh, searching your database for some potentially dynamic data, the get endpoint would always return the same initially cached data in version 14, which makes even less sense than in your server components, in my opinion, because the whole idea of setting up a get endpoint 
usually is to fetch some external data, like connect to your database or do whatever. Um, and usually that data is quite dynamic. I would say nine out of 10 times, maybe. So now they have changed this, it's no longer cached by default. So let's check out an example. What I've done is I've created in the app directory, the API folder and a time folder, and there's our route handler. And I've done exactly the same with next version 15. And this route handler is now just an API endpoint. It's not a server component that renders the data to HTML. It just serves the JSON from world time API. So we have the exact same fetch to the world time API. We parse the JSON and then we're sending that JSON in um, our response. And here's the version 15. We're doing exactly the same code. So let's check it out. I'm going to fetch the slash API slash time and we will get our JSON response. Um, let's enable pretty print here. So we'll do the same URL in Next.js version 15, but it's running on a different port here. All right, there we go. So you can see that we got our Unix time value here. That is the value that we were printing in our server component before. And here is version 14. So this is an API, right? We're not statically rendering a page or whatever. This is literally an API endpoint that as far as I'm considered, whenever I hit that API endpoint, it should run this function, running the fetch, and it should return the JSON. But this JSON data is now cached in the data cache. So watch this, if I reload this page, so the Unix time is currently 8.1.10 as the last three digits. We're going to reload and it's still 8.1.10. Reload once more, it's still 8.1.10 because the very first time I hit this endpoint, it's been cached. Makes zero sense to me. This is the version 15. We're going to reload. The last three digits are 5.7.5. We're going to reload. 5.7.9, couple of seconds later, reload. 5.8.2. So this is no longer cached by default as you would expect. This is literally how API endpoints should work. I create a request, it's a GET request. We have the URL to this route handler. The route handler sees, hey, this is the GET method function. So let's run it and it fetches the data and it responds to data. That's literally what my browser is requesting here. Now, if you want to opt in of caching or opt out of caching in the old version, you could do that again by in version 14. If you want to opt out of caching, you would add the cache option, no cache on your fetch. So this will now if I just reload this, so the last three digits are 621. You can see 624, so we've now opted out of caching. Uh, or similarly, you could set your revalidate flag here. So export, const, revalidate. And you should also be able to do it with the dynamic equals force dynamic, but that doesn't work for me for whatever reason. You can set it to zero like this, and now it will be a dynamic endpoint. But I'm going to leave that out. Instead, if you want this API endpoint data to be cached, you can now opt into caching. So you can have a cache object with force cache. So now this data from this particular fetch will be cached. Or if you want to cache the complete path or the complete route, you could do export const dynamic equals force static. So I can label the whole path, the whole route to be static. So you can do it in different ways. I'm just going to leave this out. Let's uh, create another build once more. npm run build. And we'll see what the build will tell us about which things are dynamic. Now, as we have seen, um, the Next.js 15 doesn't really show us if things are dynamic or static correctly. So remember, this is a release candidate. So they're still changing things, but let's check it out. All right, so interestingly, our API in the version 15 actually is shown as dynamic. So our API routes are dynamic by default. And you can see that it is still static in version 14. If I were to label this with cache equals uh, no cache or revalidate equals zero, then this will be dynamic as well. But you would have to deliberately do that. Now I would have to deliberately label a route to be static. And I think that makes much more sense at this moment. Cool. So the final change then with caching is that client navigations are no longer cached by default. And I like the changes with this, but I like this even more. Let's make an example where we're going to see what this means. All right. So what I've done in the server component that we set up earlier, we're still fetching that world time and we're showing it on the page. I've removed all of the opting out of caching in version 14 and we never had it in version 15. So we know that this component will be statically rendered. We're going to change that around in a moment. But what I've done is I've added a link with the link component to go to a slash other page. 
So I've added the other route in the app directory and this page simply shows some static content. This will actually have to be a static page and it has a link back to that server component so we can navigate between the two pages. So in the Next.js version 14, if we accept for a moment that even though we're fetching, all of this data will be st uh, statically rendered, so it will be cached by default, what you would expect is that when I press the link, we go to the other page, when I press the back link, we go back and we have the same data. But as we have seen with Next.js, your components are actually dynamic by default, meaning that the fetches will always run. And then you would expect if I click link to go to another page and we go click back, then we have the new time. And that's exactly what we have at the moment. So remember, we haven't opted out of caching in our component in Next.js 14. So if I go to the other page, the data is still the same. We have 8, 10 as the last three digits. Go to the other page, go back. And because my component is static, it's still the same. As we would expect, it's not what I want. I want the component to be dynamic when we have fetching but we know that that's the case in version 14. In version 15, as we have seen, our component always re-renders because we're using a fetch. We don't have to opt out of caching. We have to opt in. I have le left it alone, so it is not cached by default. So we have 981. I'm going to redirect 993, 995. So this is, of course, rendered again. However, this is what you would expect from reading the changes to the fetch request. But what does this whole thing about client navigation mean? Well, let's go and check out this diagram once more. We also had this in-memory router cache. So we have already built our app at the moment. In the version 14, the server component and the other page component are both cached in the full route cache. So that means all of the data from, for example, our fetch is cached, but also the pre-rendered HTML. So at request time, when my browser actually requests these pages, when I reload the page or when we navigate, um, we are going to request from our server slash server component, for example. Now the client is going to look in the browser's own memory in the Next.js router cache to see if we already have that payload. If we don't, we're going to request the full route cache for that path. So we're going to get the pre-rendered slash server component page from the server. That is going to be shown in the browser, but we're also going to save that payload, all of the data. So in our case, the object with the Unix timestamp, that will also be cached in the browser. And this means that the next time we request our page, we don't have to send a request to the server because we already have the whole payload in the browser. So the same page is just reused over and over again in the client. We're not getting anything else from the server. And this is a problem. Because if I want this component to be dynamic, which is now the default, as long as you're using fetch in a component in Next15, if I, let's say, force this fetch to be cache, no cache, now this fetch is set to skip the cache. So you would think, okay, we no longer are going to store the data in the data cache and the full route in the full route cache. So you would think that on a re uh, request of the page, we're going to have the server get the data source again and fetch the whole thing. And that's actually not happening. So watch this. I'm going to reload once and we have the same, or we have uh, the, the new data that has been cached once, but now this is cached. We're going to uh, navigate and you can see that the last three digits or the whole data stays the same. Well, wait a second. Haven't we labeled this fetch to use no cache? Well, yes, but no cache doesn't interact with the browser or the client router cache. It only disables the full root cache and the data cache. The router cache is still active. So this is extremely annoying because I can actually not get different data. There is however something more confusing. You may have noticed that the data has changed once. I didn't do a full reload of the page. So there's actually a timer on the router cache. And if the timer expires, and I think by default it's 60 seconds, I might be wrong, or it might be 30 seconds, whatever it is, then you will still create another request to the server. And because on the server, in our server component, remember we're not using clients or whatever, this is a server component, this has disabled the cache, so only then will we skip the caches and fetch the new data source and render the new page. But it only happens once every, let's say, 60 seconds. So let's see if the timer has expired again. So we have 154. 
there we go 204 so this is the weirdest behavior in the browser for the user or from the user's perspective the page which may contain dynamic data only updates randomly every now and then if i go back and forth to some other pages we have the older data and if i sit here for another minute and i go to another page and i come back later then we'll have suddenly even more new data so it's weird right and this makes zero sense to me in Next.js version 15, this client cache is disabled completely by default. And you can actually re-enable it if you want to. So we skip to the section of this blog article about caching updates. We scroll down to the client cache. You can still enable it by setting up the timer, the still timer, for your caching in the next config. So you don't have to do anything in your code. If you want the client cache to be enabled again, you just set how long do you want that client cache to remain. So if I re-request now, you can see that we're 60 seconds later, it has re-request. So I think it's 60 seconds by default, I might be wrong. You can just enable that again, but by default it's completely disabled. And that is what we need. Yes, this created an even faster um, behavior for, um, you know navigation because your pages would not have to be requested from the server there would be no http request going out until that timer has expired but you would deal with still time still data and it just doesn't make sense because if you have something that changes often there wasn't an easy way to opt out of the client cache what you would have to do is on your server we can actually check this out in the documentation so let's check out the router cache opting out it is not possible to opt out of the router cache. This is version 14. However, we can invalidate the router cache by manually calling something like revalidate path. And so what you had to do on the server is you would on your server point where let's say the data would change that you want to show on that page. Then you would also have to call revalidate path and then you would have to write down the path that you want to revalidate in the client. So this means that whenever the data in the client actually changed, and you had run that server side revalidate path function, then the client cache would be revalidated and it would request the payload from the server again. And this was so weird because I would now have to think very carefully about where and when the data changes. I would have to explicitly state that, oh, you know what? This path relies on that data. It shows that data, make sure you update it. Well, what if I have hundreds of different paths that all have that same data? Do I have to revalidate path with all of them? Well, maybe not, because there's also another option, which was revalidate tag, uh, wherever it is. Okay, I'm not going to look it up. So there are some options, but you can see this is just so confusing. And you simply couldn't opt out of the router cache before, which is ridiculous. And I still don't like how it works currently, because you have to opt in and out to its complete form in the next config. And I would love to have just an option here that says, hey, you know what? This is a page component. Just disable the client cache for this page. That doesn't work, sadly. That doesn't exist. The behavior in the new Next.js version 15 is much better because the navigation cache is just disabled by default. So as long as your server component is listed to be dynamic, which it is by default, as long as you're using fetch, you will now have no caching. Now, if I enable caching, let's say for this fetch, so cache equals force cache. Now, of course, this is a static component. And if I do one reload, we have the 440 and I'm going to navigate. And even though there is no client cache happening here, we still are getting the same data because it's cached on the server. And this is how it should be. The server will cache the data that the server has created and the client should not have any control because there's always of course a mismatch between client and server if the server would update something the client wouldn't know about it and the client thinks you know what we have our cache let's just use that data and the client wouldn't know that the server has already updated unless you use revalidate path or revalidate tag now it's all so much more streamlined and it all makes sense right so this i think is an absolutely enormous update even though I think the actual changes that they applied are relatively small, but just in the way that we work with Next.js, this is so incredible. And it's probably my favorite change that they've made since the app router. I love Next.js, I love the app router, 
And now with this change coming up very soon in the next few months in version 15, Next.js has definitely be my um, yeah best framework, favorite framework I've ever used. And I barely have any problems with it anymore. There are still some things that they should be changing. They are still working on some more things. They're continuing to improve caching in Next.js in the coming months. I would love to see what else they're working on because already this change is incredible. Let's see that. Uh, let's see if we're going to have even more incredible updates. But anyway, guys, that is how caching works and used to work, or well, still currently works in version 14. Feel free to test out the um, release candidate. You can actually scroll down on this blog article. They have made an update to create next step. So the default template has been changed. It's a bit more minimalistic and you don't have to remove as many things. It also allows you to choose if you want to use TurboPack now, so you don't have to install it separately. Um, if you want to run uh, this release candidate and test it out yourself, you can run the add RC after create next step, uh, other than at latest, which would give you the version 14. I'm not sure when version 15 is going to become stable and the actual release. Uh, probably when react 19 comes out because react 19 is one of the new updates as well in next.js 15 and i'll make a separate video about the changes in react 19 and the addition of the react compiler so check out that video subscribe to the channel if you want to see when that video comes live yeah but there's just so many cool things happening here with next and it really becomes the best i think web development framework for web applications um, ever built I love it. I think it's the best. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you are thinking about these changes. I love to start a healthy little discussion in the comments about uh, if you think these changes are good or what else you might see changed. Um, and let me also know if you have suggestions for other videos you want me to make. Subscribe and like to the channel. That's the best way to help out uh, this channel grow. And I hope I will see you in my next video. Goodbye and uh, enjoy your developing with Next15.